risk assessment. So, uh, Carla, you said you wanted to make some kind uh, of creative... Uh, yeah, I mean, no, no, not, not, not really any, any creative at all, but <laughs> as, as we are a class... As, yeah, no, no, I want to move. It's okay for you? Ah, because of the... Okay. Um, as as uh, uh, we, we are a class and as we have to stay together for a week, I think it's nice for you to introduce yourself. So please say who you are uh, from uh, where you are from and what is your main um, s uh, research field. Just, you know, to start to knowledge. And so how, maybe... how long we do we give that, uh, that uh, little exercise? <laughs> so... The exercise, what? Yeah, for people to speak. We don't, too, not too long each one. No, no, so just that. the name from where and the, the main field. All right. so, yeah, perfect. So I am going around and I will like, handle the Oh, they, they can, you know, pass the microphone yeah. like that. Hello, my name is Kwadio uh, Kwame. I'm a medical doctor. I'm uh, working at the Pasteur Institute of uh, Côte d'Ivoire working uh, in environmental health and uh, I've, been starting the, I've been started working on uh, air pollution and health recently with uh, Isabella team and uh, with uh, Miriam. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Alia Seed from Pakistan. I'm a bachelor student and working on vector bone disease. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, I am uh, Laziz Ilham Rawi from uh, Meteo France. Uh, I am a researcher in uh, the field of uh, pollution and air quality. So uh, for many years uh, I have worked in this field and now uh, I want uh, to see what is the application of uh, the air quality fields on the uh, health impact. Only the participants or only uh, the lecturers? So I'm so Jean-François Guigan, I'm a research professor in France, uh, both at uh, French Institute for Research in Developing Countries and the, the French Institute for Agriculture and Agronomy. Okay, I will give a talk next. Hi, I'm Miriam Rad. I'm assistant professor at the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Balamand in Lebanon. Uh, I work on the effect of air pollution on health, and I will be presenting the study on Beirut on Thursday. Um, it's Raymond Hajj. Um, I'm an instructor at the same faculty, same university. I'm uh, currently a PhD student. My project uh, is about air quality, indoor air quality actually, and health effects. My expertise, uh, I come from a microbiology background. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ali Sroor. I come from Lebanon. I work at the Lebanese Atomic Energy Commission as a researcher at the Accelerator Laboratory. Uh, one of our topics is the uh, we, we use uh, ISAP sampler to collect the aerosol samples, basically 2.5 micrometer. Uh, we work also on archaeological samples and some other environmental uh, samples. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Elena De Angelis. I'm from Italy. I, I'm an environmental engineer and I'm a PhD student in uh, technology for health at the University of Brescia and I work in the um, environmental uh, control system group in the mechanical department and uh, my research field is the um, use of uh, integrated assessment modeling to uh, evaluate the effective air quality policies. Hello everyone, I'm Praveen Kumar from Patna, India, and uh, I am working as a postdoctoral fellow there, at, uh, and my area of research is climate change, its impact to climate-driven vector-borne diseases, and I basically do deal with the climate models and simulations and uh, climate-driven disease modeling. Hello everyone, myself Sadaf Fatima, I am from Delhi, India, and I am working on the topic uh, atmospheric aerosols and associated human health effects. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Atar Singh from Agra, India, and I'm working on physicochemical properties of atmospheric aerosols and its impact on climate as well as human health. So, Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, just... 
Congratulations. My name is Hannah Afum from Ghana. I work with the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, um, and I'm involved in air quality dispersion modeling as well as monitoring. And um, we're also involved with the application of the XRF as well as accelerator and the reactor for profiling of elements. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bethel Mutai from the Department of Meteorology of the University of Nairobi. I'm a meteorologist by training with the research implications in remote sensing and air pollution. I just finished my PhD on the linkage between climate change, air pollution, and respiratory system. My name is Mohamed Burai. I'm uh, beginning my PhD in uh, the field of atmospheric and environmental physics, especially the relation between air quality and uh, health impact. Uh, this study will be in Cairo, in Egypt. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mustafa Nazir, uh, assistant professor in the uh, National Research Center in Egypt. Uh, my field of research is uh, astrophysics. Uh, and uh, recently I am uh, redirecting to uh, the health impact and uh, its relation with uh, climate change. I am Ali Uheda from Egypt, uh, Associated Professor, uh, Specialist in Atmospheric Physics and work on uh, climate change and uh, air quality and its impact on health. Thank you. Gamil Gamel, lecturer of Metrology, Climatology, Cairo University. My current research activities study uh, extreme events, uh, climate change projection from GCM, RCM, Cortex models over Egypt and Nile Basin countries. Okay. Hi. <coughs> My name is Urnita Spasova. I'm assistant professor at the National Center of Public Health uh, and Analysis in Sofia, Bulgaria. My background is uh, climatology from the uh, geography department, department of the University of Sofia, geology and geography faculty. And I'm interested in uh, climate change and public health issues. Hello, everybody. My name is Cyril Mezoui. I come from Cameroon. I'm working on air pollution particularly uh, urban air pollution. And now looking how to relate uh, urban air pollution to health. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Komkwa Bienda. I am assistant professor at the University of Chang in Cameroon. I am working on climate viability, especially my research has to do with the impact of anthropogenic aerosol on climate variability over Central Africa. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm from Iran, um, and I work at the uh, Air Pollution for Forecasting Department of Tehran. Hello, my name is Maria. I'm from Iran. I'm a PhD student in remote sensing and GIS, and we use them as a tool in environmental monitoring. Hello, I am Madhav Giri from Nepal. I teach in Triban University there in Kathmandu, Nepal, and my background is environmental science. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Dia. I come from Indonesia. Uh, I'm a researcher from National Nuclear Energy Agency of Indonesia, and I'm doing a research on the application of nuclear analytical technique in the chemical composition characterization of airborne particulate matter, especially in PM 2.5. And actually, my institution uh, have a collaboration to do the air quality monitoring in 17 sites in Indonesia, and it's still going on, and it's very, uh, I'm interested in making an assessment of health impact because we have a lot of data of PM 2.5, but we cannot uh, further utilize for the health impact, and that's why I'm here to, to know more about the health impact assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I am Catalina Marculet. 
I am from uh, Romania. I'm working in the Institute of Geography of the Romanian Academy, and my uh, main research activity is in climatology and climate risks. Thank you. Hey all, my name is Maurizio Gualtieri. I'm from Italy, from the National Agency for uh, New Technologies and uh, Econ Sustainable Development. Uh, I work mainly in uh, aerosol characterization and in vitro toxicology of particles. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. I am Massimo Stafoggia. I am a statistician as a background and I'm a senior epidemiologist in the Department of Epidemiology of the Lazio region in Rome. I will speak later about air quality modeling and measurements and today about population rates and I mean the basic we need to do health impact assessment. Okay, so I think there is one there more is person. someone else? Sorry. Oh yeah, two more persons. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Benjif Abdelfattah from Morocco, from National Center of Energy Sciences and Nuclear Techniques. I'm interested in um, uh, application of nuclear techniques for characterization uh, of uh, aerosol in uh, urban city, cities. And then I worked uh, actually on uh, uh, the use of modeling uh, tools for uh, forecasting the, the behavior of aerosols. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Ramiz Shubar from Iraq. I am chief of physics in a refinery and I also give lectures in Al Mustansiriya University in Baghdad. Last year I finished my PhD in South Korea. I work in air pollution and modeling of air pollution and I used a very complex model named CALBAF. After six months I control on this model. Okay. Thank you. Uh, There's one more person. More? <laughs> I think on the last, but not the least, as we Another said. Another continent. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Cara Maizano. I'm originally from the US, but I live and work in, in France, in Paris, um, at, uh, the, which is now the Sorbonne uh, University. Um, I work in environmental epidemiology, focusing mainly on air pollution and, and health, so thank you. Yeah. including health impact assessment, yes. Okay, so, um, you know, I think, okay, the variety of the world is guaranteed. I mean, we have, and we, oh, we miss someone from Australia. Okay, so go, go back. <laughs> uh, the, we have a good mix between uh, climate change people and air pollution people, which is very nice. I'm afraid that we have a few people just from the health side. So I'm, me, I'm one <laughs> from, from the health effect evaluation. So uh, I'm afraid, I mean, not to get you so bored, but the course is on the, why we are measuring the exposure, because we want to do something about the health effects. So it's important. My talk will be um, brief, uh, let's say half an hour, because I want just to uh, summarize and uh, maybe uh, start to introduce some definition because it's important. And then you will, will have other specific lessons on one of these topic. It's important to understand the base because otherwise as we use, uh, uh, and sometimes there is you know, not so clear when we are talking about epidemiology, when we are talking about health impact. So I wanna try to just to start uh, and uh, try to, to, to define. As I told you this morning, I'm an environmental epidemiologist uh, working in Rome, um, both on environmental studies, but more recently on the health impact uh, studies, especially on air pollution. You, you will see a lot of example coming from the air pollution, but the importance is to understand the methodology. Then you can change the exposure, and the ad, but all the other stuff uh, will be like the one we are going to present. Uh, okay, what are we talking about? Let's say 
that we have an exposure. This exposure can be a chimney, so an industry, or can be noise, as Isabella told this morning. This is Rome, this is the acoustic map of the noise, traffic noise in Rome, in Italy. Uh, traffic comes from cars, so you can see a, a nice map of the main streets in Rome. Noise is an exposure in environmental epidemiology. Or you can have PM, this is PM, yes, PM 2.5, air quality, uh, so the maps of concentrations on the ground coming from uh, this um, particular matter, the pollutants of the air. So we have an exposure, we can measure or estimate that, and we have people living in these areas. So our question is, is this exposure to these noise, air pollution, climate, or what else, industry, environmental factor associated with an effect or a change in the health status of population exposed. I say a change because sometimes the exposure can be a benefit. Let's think about green, blue, water, uh, trees, they, 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 we know that can, they can bring beneficial effects of the, of the population exposed. But when we talk about uh, pollutants coming from industry or from traffic, we are talking with an effect, in an, an adverse effect. So a change, in, in any case, we are talking about in ch the change in the health status of population exposed. So all this week will be to <laughs> create knowledge, evidence-based knowledge, to let our uh, politicians, this is not just for science, this is not only to uh, you know, write a very good, a very, a very well published paper, but health impact assessment is about uh, to, uh, to provide people who have to decide evidence-based knowledge that they can use to do something. Health impact is related to interventions. It's not just the description of the health effect. So let's start about that. We are working because we want that someone else, not us uh, as uh, technicians or scientists, use our results to do something. And so what we need is a recipe. We need an exposure that could be measured or estimate, and we will talk later with Massimo and also tomorrow how we can estimate the exposure. Then we need a completed pathway. This morning, someone, probably Bernard, asked how we can say that this disease is related to that outcome. That should be a biological possibility, of course, and we have to study or let experts to study on that, but there will be a complete pathway that starts from the exposure and finished at the health status of the population. And then we want a comparison. We want to compare people exposed with people non-exposed. So if in this comparison, people exposed has, have an higher rates of uh, mortality, morbidity, drug, drug consumptions, which, uh, I mean, you can choose the outcomes depending on the data that you have, but if the exposure is related to the outcomes, we should, we find, we will find a higher increase of the morbidity or mortality status in the people exposed. And then this effect uh, should be plausibly related to the exposure. Otherwise, we are doing you know, garbage, not, not science. So at, at the very beginning, we should have an, a hypothesis that we, we want to test. And how can we assess exposures? I'm not good, I'm not an, an a technician in exposure. The majority of, of you in, in the audience are better than I, so you probably can agree with me in this table that put in a higher, uh, yeah, oh, in, a, in a scale, starting from the best, which is the biomonitoring, because if we found in the human body, fluids, blood, uh, uh, nasal um, fluid, uh, 
something that is exogenous, that we cannot have biologically in our body, it comes from the external. So the biomonitoring is the perfect exposure assessment study when we want to define the individual exposure of a population. Because for sure, they are like monitorings. There are people living in an area with an industry or with a high level of air pollution. If we found in, in their body uh, metals or dioxin or whatever you want to test, that's the best way to define the exposure. But biomonitoring studies are very expensive. We need a lot of money. The sample size is an issue, and is related to the amount of money that you have. So it's impossible to biomonitor the whole population. So we have, you know, decrease the validity of our study, and we can measurements. We have by routine monitoring, monitoring the, the air quality of, uh, let's, let's talk about air pollution as an example. We can uh, estimate, and Massimo is going to explain how, and we can use at the very end, but it's not uh, so bad. If you don't have anything else, uh, it's nice to start a study asking people. Sometimes also other uh, kind of science, such as, I don't know, focus group or social science can be important if you don't have data. Because we know that people from U.S. <laughs> have every, every, I mean, uh, also people coming from the north of Europe. But me, I live in Rome in the Mediterranean basin, and I can tell there is some dif differences between USA and South Europe and then to Africa or East. So it's good to have data and to work hardly to collect data, to, you know, to let your data become every year better and better and better so you can use, you can use them in future. So exposure. Then, and we will have uh, plenty of lessons on that. Biomonitoring is a definition. The definition is the concentration of biomarkers in blood or urine. It's the perfect indicator of human contamination. And we will have a specific lesson on human biomonitoring and another one on plants and ecological biomonitoring. Why we want? Because we know for sure that the contamination of soil or of plants of animals can um, act with, with the human body uh, through the food chain because we eat uh, vegetables coming from that contaminated soil. We can drink water with some contamination and we breath. So everybody can come and enter our body and produce an health effect and we, that we want to estimate. Exposure assessment, we can start uh, simply with monitoring, but we'll have uh Nowadays, the, the, the knowledge is extremely enhanced and maximal. In, in, in half an hour, we talk about satellite data to, uh, to define the exposure and also sensor in, uh, arriving at the data fusion, uh, which is the, the, the new frontier of the knowledge in exposure assessment, but also the estimation, the dispersion modeling, because we can, using the models, and we will have the tomorrow day dedicated on how we, you, can use dispersion modeling, because there are a lot of uh, materials for free from the internet. So you can, you, you just have to bring your own data, but you can use meteorological fields available in the data sets uh, that, that, that are for free and it's easy to, to obtain and we will talk tomorrow about that. But how, I mean, the general idea is that we have an emission source, can be a chimney, can be an area, let's talk about waste, for example, waste disposal sites, and we can follow the particles through into the atmospheres, the particle starts to react with other particles, transforming something else. Everything depends of meteorological conditions and orography. And so we can, we can how are, are we saying that? Because at the end, these particles emitted from our source will end on the ground. And in the ground, there are people living, so we can provide um, our, in our research a concentration. 
a, a, a quantity, an amount of particles that can be measured and can be associated with people using, for example, the residential address. So we, we don't have to ask people or to biomonitor in them or to do something else. Just simply having the address of all the people, residents in that site, and the results of the dispersion modeling using a JIE system, we can provide a sign and exposure to each individuals. And we can use uh, annual average concentration, monthly, uh, whatever, whatever we want. So uh, we need emissions, we need the meteorological files, and we need uh, information about the orography. And those, sorry, here are some examples. This is a test simulation. We have two sorts. And as you can see, depending uh, each hour, it's an hour, hour images, so in 24 hours, depending on orography is the same, but depending on the meteorological condition, the particles will disperse in a different ways, so can concentrate in, which, in one side of the area or, or another one. This is another example in a city, Florence. In Italy, we have uh, this vertical building, which is Campanile di Giotto, one of the main beautiful uh, church that we have in Italy. And this is traffic. And as you can see, the Campanile, which is, I don't know the English for Massimo, help? Clock, no, it's not clock, it's the, see, the, well, the bell of a church uh, is, I don't know, uh, but it's uh, the vertical building. It, huh? Maybe, I don't know, Bell Tower of a church. Um, and the traffic coming from the main street, uh, it, con the, con the emissions and then the concentrations uh, are influenced by the orography, in this case, the, the, the height, the size of the building. And this is another simulation, um, vert uh, horizontal level, but you can see how the pollutants can react uh, and uh, surrounding the buildings. And this is extremely important when you talk about people living in an urban context, we will have maybe one main street and other streets with less traffic, less car traffic, but still influence. And the dispersion modeling can help you in define the exposure, both of people living in the high traffic zone and people living not in a, maybe in a quiet, because air is everything, it's not noise. For noise, if you have a barrier, Okay, that's it, more or less the decibels stopped. But for um, air pollutants is not like that. And at the end, what we will have? We will have this one, which is uh, the an, a, a medium average in a year, concentrations maps. This is the city of Rome. The violet is where the pollutants are more concentrated. This is NO2, NO2 so traffic. And uh, depending on the traffic and the yellow and green area. So in each square, people live. And if we have the addresses of the people, we can assign es the estimated, it's not the true, it's the estimated exposure of people living in that square. So. In the last 20 years, we, we have learned some lessons from dispersion models and biomonitoring because they are both very useful. Biomonitoring will be the perfect choice, but it depends on how much money you have to uh, start the campaign. But any uh, there, there are two different methods to estimate the exposure, and what is important is to define the spatial concentration. People living in violet are more exposed than people living in green. So it's uh, something that you can tell. I mean, it's, uh, they are differently exposed, which is important for epidemiology, for epidemiology because we need the contrast exposed and not exposed to define if uh, this pollutants is related with health outcomes or not. And uh, it, very important, uh, biomonitoring uh, reflects recent exposures. 
So if, you, uh, if we start a biomonitoring campaign and we found maybe high level of metals, cadmium um, or I don't know, arsenic in the urine of people, this is a very recent exposure, let's say three up to six months, not more. And it's important. And the human contamination come mainly from, from the food. Uh, some other definition, global burden of disease, this morning we, uh, we, uh, we, we look at some results, but what is it, it is exactly? It's an amount, it's the magnitude of the impact, because in blue we have the exposed and the not exposed, the attributable effect, the risk, the extra risk is, you know, the red part, which is completely attributable to the exposure, which means that if we remove the exposure, we cannot tell the difference between exposed and unexposed. So that this is what global burden on this is want to indicate, the magnitude of the impact of the pollutant. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm boring you with very, very easy definition, but I think it's important for those who maybe are not familiar with the definition to to, to learn, to listen. And uh, this is a global burden of disease uh, 2010. Now there is an, another, um, another um, release, more recent. But just to say that ambient air pollution is one of the 10 uh, um, risk factors for the health of people. The global burden of disease means globally considering all the factors coming from uh, and environmental factors and, and, and the not environmental. For example, the, in the first row, we have high blood pressure, which is the most heavy uh, the, um, determinants of the health of a person. Then we have uh, tobacco smoking. Then we have alcohol use. Individual risk factors are the first three. And we can do something because we could uh, not, don't smoke, uh, reduce the alcohol consumption, do sports to decrease the, 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 the high blood pressure. But what about air pollution? Individually, what we can do is something that we cannot do. I mean, we have to breath. So it's something that someone else, let's say the politicians or people who take decision, have to do. But just to say that ambient particular matter pollution is one of the first uh, in the in the in the first lines. Um, so global burden of this is the amount. What is health risk assessment? Is a, a process that we use to um, define the toxicity of an element. Is there a relation between this element and the risk for health of people involved? It comes from at the very beginning was related, this is the first USA EPA definition, it was related to chemicals. So the toxicity of the chemicals. We can use the risk assessment formula to define the risk uh, for, for a lot of cancer, and this use also for radiation, for nutritional factors, for socioeconomic factors, and uh, mainly on cancer is a process, the objective is to estimate toxicity, and it's a tool for translating the findings of research into science-based risk management. Risk management, what we can do to reduce the exposure of the population exposed. In occupational epidemiology, for example, this is a very common uh, practice because we want to reduce the level of this toxic toxicant element because to, in order to prevent the health status of people exposed. So it's a process, start from the hazard identification, then the exposure assessment. Uh, you, you will see a lot of GIS uh, examples because everything is in practical is a GIS based approach because our um, uh, goal is to define if there is an association between an exposure and an outcome, and then we can calculate the number of attributable cases as just explained this morning for climate uh, and air pollution, and we can talk of uh, uh, years of life lost, uh, or dailies, uh, or attributable mortality cases, and that's it. So anyhow, this is 
we are talking about a scientific process. So we need the protocol. We have uh, it, to take into account uh, a very well-defined hypothesis at the very beginning, because through our process, we want to answer that question. And, uh, Risk assessment uh, uh, depends on uh, uh, the amount of chemical uh, in the soil, water, or air, and uh, the contact. To be a toxic, there should, should have been a contact be, be, between the, this particular element and a human body. Um, epidemiology, my, my field. Again, the aim is to estimate the effect of exposure of interest. So this is a chimney people living around. This is a real, uh, real uh, example that we perform in Italy. Uh, the dots, black, black dots are the residential address that we ask at the municipality. So they provide a very nice file uh, with the address, with all the change of address, because when we talk about 20 years, 30 years, 40, 70, I mean, the, we are talking about the general population living there. We can take into account also of address when they change address, because it's important. So we have the maps coming from the dispersion modeling, this chimney, you know, the in orange uh, and in green, you can tell some differences in exposure. The maps, strongly depend on the wind and the meteorological aspects. So we can have, when we, in the past, in environmental epidemiology, we used distance from the source. So we uh, define a point, the source, and then radius, one kilometer, two, three, four, because the, in, uh, the, 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 the hypothesis is that living close to a industry is bad for your health. But now we know that everything, if, when we talk about pollutants in the air, everything depends on the meteo. So you can see that maybe the people living very close are less exposed than people living so far. And that's something that now we can tell because we have the availability of the dispersion model. And how we can tell that um, that this uh, industry, this, the, those chimneys are an hazard for the health of people because we will have people exposed and cases, I don't know, lung cancer among them, and people unexposed and cases, lung cancer, because the, we have to take into account that all the diseases have multifactorial factorial, uh, determinants. So you can have lung cancer both because you smoke and you live close to the industry and you have an occupational um, job, a risk uh, at, at the occupational level. And so we will have uh, cases among the exposed people and cases among those not exposed. And the epidemiology is very simple because it's a comparison. We put at the numerator the number of cases coming from the exposed and at the uh, denominator the, old, the number of cases. So simply, it's a, uh, algebra, it's mathematics, simply comparing this ratio. If this ratio has, is higher than one, it means that we have more cases in the exposed people. And the opposite if, uh, if, if it's so. We can tell very easy, well, I mean, it's a PhD 10 years, <laughs> but just to understand the principle is a comparison. So in epidemiology, what we don't have to be wrong is in the exposure. Because if you failed to define very well the exposure, we can do, you know, provide a, a wrong messages. And the ambition of all the epidemiologists would, would be to measure a causal relationships. So we would like that these uh, determinants as been the major causes of the disease that we are measuring. Uh, this morning they said, uh, how, uh, what are the organs? And Isabella explained very well that when we talk, for example, of particular matter, the PM 2.5 or the ultra fine, they are so small that you, they can go directly into the blood and they, we can have damage of all, um, all the, but Isabella already, already explained this morning and also when we are exposure. Now we know that we are exposure in all steps of our life. Even before 
we we be in a very very early stage okay so the goal of epidemiology is to assess uh, relationships we will want to have uh, the perfect curve uh, the increase of the exposure we observe an increase of the of the outcome but not, not always the relationships is so clear. The, the, those are example coming from uh, the study, our study in Rome. You can see, I'm not going to explain, but just to say that the relation sometimes is not clear, is difficult, the interpretation is difficult, and just to told you that we need the comparison also with other groups uh, internationally that maybe are working on the same topic so we can compare if two different studies, very well conducted, big cohort, say the same, maybe is something going on. So that's not, not we would like the perfect exposure relationships, but as sometimes it's not like that. And um, we can have, we can uh, use short-term or long-term effects of air pollution. We can use a lot of outcomes depending on what we have. Because sometimes if, if you have only mortality, okay, let's go, that use mortality. In, now there are a lot of other outcomes that, ca that can be used for acute effects. We usually, the study are temporal differences when in a scale of one year, 10 years, 20 years, we have a lot of information of the exposure, and we can see that maybe the mortality or the morbidity follow the patterns, just comparing, that is always a comparison. And also we can study chronic effects using the maps, the spatial differences in exposed and non-exposed person. Um, so why? we perform an epidemiology study because we want to provide this decision and we want, we would like to have them translated into intervention. It's not always like that and I think you, you all agree with me. Now, health impact assessment is not the same as epidemiology because in the epidemiology we conduct a study we measure the exposure, we provide the dose response relationships, at the end we will have a risk or, I don't know, attributable risk, I mean, but a number of the estimation on the risk. Health impact assessment use uh, results coming from epidemiological study so we don't have to start a cohort study because in epidemiology, the best study design is the cohort approach because it's prospective one. We will be sure that the exposure and then the outcomes because we are you know, following the people in, the, in, the, in our data. Uh, but it's extremely long period and we need money because sometimes to conduct a court study, even a retrospective one, it will take one, two, three years, and sometimes we don't have so much time to take a decision. If an industry is killing the people living nearby, they always, they, they prefer to put money for an epidemiological study in order to postpone the time of decision. Because when an industry or the, I don't know, the le levels of air pollution are so high, the only thing that you can do to prevent the effect is to cut the emission, to reduce the population emission. So an action is needed because how we can do individually. So, okay, and then HIA use epidemiological uh, results coming from the study and can be used to compare the policies. If any, if we have policy strategies, scenarios, and we have to decide, we have compared. So it's in theory, we can do an health impact assessment in your office. You don't need anything, just the relationships between um, exposure and outcomes coming from literature. So you need a library, you need a computer, and you need Word and an Excel to perform the calculation. And tomorrow we will show you how. Skip. There we have major steps, but at the, the very the important thing is that we need number four, 
uh, available uh, set of exposure response functions coming from epidemiology, so coming from other people's study. And number six, the background uh, disease rates of your population, because what you want is to calculate the extra risk due to the, your specific uh, uh, pollutants, starting from a background rate, because people is dying every, you die because uh, likely it's uh, age related, you know, but you can have a cancer, you can die from cancer, but in some the area of the world, these rates are really higher than expected. So what we want to uh, calculate is the extra risk due to the environmental contaminants. Why? Because we would like to remove that part and, you know, let people to, to, to live uh, as the, 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 the natural history of uh, the disease. And so we can calculate the burden of disease, so an amount. Again, same pathway. Policy, we want to compare policies. We need to know the emissions, the concentrations, the map. Emission is what is emitted in the pollutants. Concentration is what is a ground level or what you want. And using exposures coming from the literature and calculating uh, uh, above the background disease rates, you can have the health effects and the impacts that you want. The finally, that's the, my last part, integrated environmental health impact assessment, because we can estimate effects. It's a more complicated strategy. Uh, I, I, I'm sure you, someone will give you all the slides, so don't take notes, but I want you to go through the Interise uh, project uh, materials, especially uh, the tool, because you can uh, use the tool to calculate your own health impact assessment. The differences between health impact assessment and the integrated environmental health impact assessment that this is one is complex. Take into account both positive and negative effect. You can evaluate different scenarios, and we have people involved. Also, the stakeholders are politicians, scientists, maybe people living in, in that area. And the, it, it has been proved that the particip participatory process is one of the excellence of the methods. So this is the framework, we, we need the one month to explain, but we will um, talk about that for all the week, so, so don't worry, My, this is just the introduction. Uh, again, the hypothesis test, the, the question is the very important, and then also we, um, sometimes, I, I work uh, not in an academia, I work in an institutional place, so I work from the government of my region, sometimes they care about environment, not so, so often, and sometimes they ask me what we have to do. Hmm? It's me, I don't know what you have to do, but they want help in order to create the scenarios because they don't, want, they don't know exactly how they want. So our, uh, our also our um, scope is to provide uh, realistic scenarios. So we need a protocol. So please, also if it's, it's not epidemiology, but we still need a very rigorous protocol because we want someone else to replicate your, your results. And then the, there will be, the, I will have another talk at the end of the week because reporting and communication is crucial. Because we don't, in this context, we, we, not, we are not going to report in a um, scientific paper. It will be a great literature. It will be a paper that everybody, the citizens, the politicians, uh, all the, have to read. So the uh, language should be extremely different. And also uh, the communication phases in a public uh, uh, arena when they, you know, through <laughs> stones to you if they, they don't agree with, with the results. So it's very important to have on board people helping us to communicate because as a scientist, we are bad communicators. So we need an extra, an extra help authority. And uh, so is it complex? Yes, in my opinion is it, but we can do that. Just to um, uh, reassume some uh, 
uh, of the aspect is complex because in real life uh, we have multiple sources because people live in an urban setting with car, with noise, with industry, with, with everything else. The pathways are different. We can take the pollutants from the soil, the water, the air, the time of contamination. Now I'm working on e-waste in Africa and it's kind of a recent uh, um, uh, issue in environmental epidemiology because e-waste, everything comes from the computer of all uh, around the world is simply through in an open air and what about the health of people li living there population size is an issue and justice please take into account always that the uh, um, environmental justice is an issue in this topic of this poor Poor, uh, when I say poor, I say less educated mostly. People uh, have to live close to this place because how the price of houses are less. So they have no choice. They have to stay there blocked. And this is important. If you have uh, an amount of money, you don't have to distribute in an equal way of the population, but you should put money where the need is more deep that, you know, divided the, the, the cake uh, in regular pieces. Occupational exposure. Sometimes people live in a bad environment and also have a very bad occupational, I'm talking about worldwide context, and do you have in, to take into account the occupational exposure? And also, and last but not least, the environmental worries and media pressure the opinions. Sometimes they start, you know, the rumors start and become bigger, bigger. Maybe there is nothing in that area, but they are so worried about that, that we, in any case, we have to reassure uh, them. And uh, some, so that's very important. When we talk as scientists, we are not talking about our own personal opinion. We should provide evidence-based results. That's important. I know that I'm, uh, I'm really, excuse myself again because I'm saying maybe banal, uh, uh, but in environmental epidemiology it's really important. There is no room for the opinions. We need facts, evidence-based facts. Uh, so, is it a multidisciplinary context? Yes, it is, and this room, we probably have one person from La One Lai, at the end, I put law because, for example, now in Italy, uh, we are conducting an epidemiological study in an environmental um, bad place because a court asked them, which is uh, a mess. I mean, I don't want to talk now about that. Uh, and the discipline requires well-trained experts. That's why I'm really happy. Again, I say thank you to the organizers, I mean, including me, so you say, but because even the education can be integrated. So we can talk each other and exchange our uh, mood. Uh, so integration, the, the net, this is the Italian net, a little bit advertisement. It took a while to create this net. Now all the Italian people in environment and health are connected to each other, and it's nice. I would like to create a network from this classroom because from now on we could participate in maybe in international research projects together. We, we will be nice. Uh, so in conclusion, a close collaboration of researchers, so the network is a must. I mean, no room for people of health staying, sitting in the building and people from exposure, climate in one building, air pollution in another one. When we talk about climate change, air pollution should be in and the other way around. And uh, because our goal is to provide long-term positive impact on population health, I also want to stress that I don't have any conflict of interest because when you talk about environmental epidemiologists, pretend to the speaker to uh, define if they have or not. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carla. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would like to have a question, but we, I will stay with you for um, and just for, for all, all the week. So maybe uh, I can leave Massimo because th this we'll save a little time it just, a bit it's late. just for as an introduction because we will going to talk piece by piece for the next days. So unless you don't want to say maybe something more precise, I think we can move to.
Ah, but not in the, in the introduction of the courts. So I don't like the courts. Can <laughs> be okay because well, let's go to Massimo, Massimo yeah. Staffordia, please. 